you're no stranger to the political landscape in in Zimbabwe. You're a member of uh, Zimbabwe's only GNU, which is potentially one of its most successful governments. Uh, just speak to us about the current political situation in Zimbabwe from, from your perspective as a member of the Triple C. Fundamentally, we face a, a major crisis in this country, a crisis of legitimacy. Uh, we face a flowing from that an economic crisis. Um, obviously, my view is partisan, but I do believe that even international observers, more objective than I, um, agree that uh, this election was unconstitutional and illegal. My own view is that uh, it, it was the most illegal election this country has ever seen. Um, although it wasn't as violent as, say, at the 2008 election, uh, if you look at the, the breaches to the Constitution, um, if you look at the breaches to the electoral law, uh, you'll see that there were systematic, uh, sustained uh, breaches of the Constitution and the electoral law to render the, the election uh, you know, seriously fraud. Um, and that wouldn't be, look, it's always bad when you have an illegal election, but sometimes you have an illegal election where you know one party is absolutely dominant and they win with a 60 to 70 percent majority, but where the margin is so narrow as it was here, it means that those illegalities had a material effect on the outcome of the election. And as a result, um, for all Mr. Mnangagwa and Zanu PF's protestations, they lacked legitimacy domestically and internationally, and that doesn't only impact on their ability to govern um, with the will of the people behind them, mm. uh, but it also means that they have an exceptionally tough time in um, being able to, for example, address Zimbabwe's debt arrears and to seek um, the investment that this country so badly needs. So we, we, we're at a very a dangerous point uh, in, in our history. Uh, and there's no way that ZANU PF can just go ahead, go to loan on this. They they are seriously isolated. Um, Mr. Manangago, even within his own party, uh, is uh, under threat. Uh, we saw that in the fact that more people voted for his party than for him. And I think his recent cabinet uh, reflects that, that he, he doesn't have the confidence in his own party and he's, he's now surrounded himself with um, family members and close associates who, who he trusts because he can't trust the wider party. So that, that's a combination, that, that's a, a very serious convergence mm. a, of, of issues, a perfect storm that he faces. And we all face it because we're all in the country with him. Now, Mr. Coltart, you've, you've mentioned that the this government is illegitimate, uh, according to, to your viewpoint. A reflection on, on that election by a number of observer missions, the SADC uh, African Union and the uh, European uh, Union Observer Commission all, all seem to suggest, in fact, have stated emphatically that there were many rules that were, that were broken in, in the process. Do you expect them to, to act? Do you expect them to, to put any pressure on the administration of President Emerson Monangagwa, to at the very least uh, engage or, or, or act, uh, form a government of uh, national unity of sorts? I don't know what they, they will do, but I, I have no doubt that uh, people like President Pichalema will not ignore these breaches. Um, but I think that the major problem now is that we have exported as Zimbabwe's instability to the entire region. I've often argued that Zimbabwe has a disproportionate influence on the region, both positively and negatively, because of our geographical position, because of our history, because of the high levels of education of our people, uh, because of the potential of this country, because of the, the um, communication routes that go through 
Zimbabwe, we, we exercise disproportionate influence. And uh, when we exercise that negatively, we have a corrosive effect on the entire region. So I think the question is not so much whether people in the region will do anything about this. There's no doubt in my mind that people, as I say, like President Chilema and Prime Minister Matikani and Lesotho, I will not let this pass. Uh, the, the major problem is that we now have division within SADC, uh, which destabilizes the whole of SADC. And, and you know, these, these revelations of the last um, week or so, where you have a government institution in Zimbabwe, uh, the, the ZBC, uh, producing utterly spurious propaganda uh, regarding a neighboring head of state. Um, that, that's in no one's best interest. Uh, and, and so Zimbabwe's crisis has now been exported. It's now become a, a SADC crisis. And it's not going to go away easily because, um, you know, although there may be countries like Namibia, uh, which are prepared to turn a blind eye, you know, our, our immediate neighbors are, are affected uh, by this, this crisis. And some of them are not prepared to, to let it go by. To, to answer your question, you know, what will the outcome be of this? Well, it's, it's very clear that Mr. Manangakwa and Zanu PF are, are digging their heels in. Um, they are determined to say, if you look at their rhetoric, you know, they say uh, stunning victories, you know, resounding victories. That's, that's the language that they're trying to portray. And, and not by anyone's imagination, at a 52% margin, um, you know, aside from the illegality, illegalities being viewed as a resounding victory. But the point I'm making is that they're clearly digging their heels in. They're not prepared to, to compromise. They're determined to say that this is the outcome of the election and we're here for another five years.